Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about a new research article that came out in Nature's Reviews Immunology. It was an opinion piece and they were looking at the drivers or initiators of autoimmune disease. Classically, autoimmune disease is looked upon as a problem where your body's immune system is attacking your own body part. So with type 1 diabetes, your immune system is targeting and destroying uh, your pancreas, specifically the beta cells of your pancreas. In rheumatoid arthritis, uh, the immune system is attacking the joints, et cetera, et cetera. There's over 100 different autoimmune diseases. It's interesting. Um, we work with autoimmune disease a lot. I'm very concerned about it because its incidence is increasing very, very dramatically in this country and has been. And while there is a genetic component to autoimmune disease, we know that the genetics just don't change as fast as the incidence of autoimmune disease has increased. So we're suspicious of more of an environmental type issue occurring. In this particular research, they use celiac disease as a model because they pointed out that, of course, gluten is not um, it's the initiator of celiac disease, um, but once that immune system gets going, it's thought that in classic autoimmune disease, then it just goes. So in other words, you've turned on the machine and off it goes, and it will just continue in its destruction mode. But they use celiac disease as an interesting model to show the fact that when you stop eating gluten, then that autoimmune tendency of destroying your small intestine, as in the case of celiac, that stops. So they start looking at these autoimmune diseases from another perspective. And I love that because it's something we see in our practice all the time. And while we've certainly never claimed to heal all autoimmune disease or reverse all autoimmune disease, we certainly have seen some nice stalls of autoimmune disease, meaning it didn't continue to progress, and reversals as well. Uh, once again, not 100% of the time, but it certainly gave one pause because if it was a machine that just got turned on and went into auto-destruct mode, there would be absolutely nothing you can do. Uh, Dr. Alessia Fasano has done some very nice research on um, looking at type 1 diabetes and seeing that when the leaky gut was handled, this initial study was in, in rats, but then he actually did human studies as well. Um, but finding that uh, with this rat study, if you didn't allow different antigens, so those are kind of the bad guys, to leave the gut, then you could literally stop the initiation of type 1 diabetes in rats that were genetically uh, completely predisposed to get this disease. So it was very, very strong in their, in their genetics and, and pretty, pretty much all of them would develop the disease. And all he did was alter the permeability or, or the integrity of the small intestine and two-thirds of them never got the disease. So we, we knew there was something there. Um, so in this particular study that I'm talking about today, and this is um, from this year, 2013, they mentioned the fact that rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease could be associated with an immune response against bacteria in, in the uh, small intestine, our, our, uh, called our microbiota, or the part of, um, they're, they're in our small intestine and have a lot to do with our immune system, but that that could be an initiator. They also mentioned in primary biliary cirrhosis that there was a bacterium associated with that autoimmune disease. Um, there's another autoimmune disease called ankylosing spondylitis where the spine starts fusing and there's also an infectious organism associated with that. So what this comes down to is a pretty complex um, uh, research paper, but what it comes down to is that this kind of um, dyed-in-the-wool narrow viewpoint of autoimmune disease is really starting to be shaken up a little bit. And the good news about that is what it means is that being diagnosed with one doesn't mean that's it. Your only choice is to go on dangerous immune uh, reducing or, or suppressing drugs so that your immune system can't keep attacking you. Um, that's a, a very common protocol for autoimmune disease, thinking, oh, your immune system's out of control, it's on auto attack, and so the only thing we can do is suppress it. 
So of course, those people on immunosuppressive drugs are much more likely to get infection, cancers, you know, very dangerous things. So to understand that there can be something coming from the outside in, like gluten, like um, a leaky gut, like a bacteria, that you can isolate and then remove, take that pressure off the immune system, and it will stop its attack mode that's some good news. That's, a, that's very good news. Um, the other issue here that ties into that is the fact that when you're diagnosed with one autoimmune disease, you're much, much more likely to get another, which makes sense. If your immune system is in this attack mode, it starts finding other tissues to attack as well. But if you can remove that initiator or the driver, as they talked about in this particular study, then you can prevent that potentially from happening. So it's exciting, and I think the takeaway for those of you who either have autoimmune disease yourself or have autoimmune disease in your family is to really look at everything we can do to ensure we don't have any food sensitivities such as gluten or dairy, uh, we have a strong uh, immune system, and we have an, an intact small intestine, not leaky but intact so it keeps bad guys from coming into the body, um, which is one of its major jobs other than digesting food. Um, we don't have any chronic infections, bacterial, parasitic, what have you. These would be the main thrusts to look at. So it's pretty exciting and um, I probably have uh, opened up a lot of questions, but that's what I'm here for and I love to hear from you. So ask away and I'll see what I can do to help. Until next time, I wish you very good health.